Hi guys, welcome to my channel Lush Gardener. I hope you guys are fine and are safe at home. So guys, in today's video, we'll be talking about the top six misconceptions about succulents. The first misconception is related to the succulent habitat. Now, a lot of people believe that succulents belong to desert while it might be partially correct, but it's not completely true as some succulents grow in desert, but not all. They are distributed in different environments. Some grow in jungles, some grow near coastal areas, some tend to grow on mountains and hills. Now, guys, there is a huge difference between growing in desert and growing in desert like conditions, basically arid conditions. Now, I know why the misconception might have happened because we tend to use sand to grow succulents. Now, guys, we do not use sand because they grow in desert. We use it to make the succulent soil loose and porous and sand is one one of the best option. So what exactly is the natural habitat of succulents? Now guys, as you can see, succulents grow in arid conditions where there is too much of heat, less water, heat waves, etc. Then how do they survive? Because we often say we give so much of care for succulents, but yet they die. But how come they tend to survive in wild? Now over here, I've tried to replicate how the succulents look like in their natural habitat. Now they tend to very comfortably get themselves stuck in between the cavities of rocks and they tend to grow in between them. Now what happens is that when there is a heat wave, it is going to pass over them because the heat wave passes over the surface but does not enter into the cavities. So due to this, the succulents are safe from getting damaged or harmed by the harmful heat waves. Apart from this, in arid conditions, as we all know that rainfall is very very scanty it's very scarce so whenever it rains on the surface the water tends to evaporate much faster but the water that gets collected in between these cavities stays for some time and this amount of water is enough for the succulents to quench their thirst and remain hydrated Apart from growing in between these cavities, succulents also grow next to huge rocks. Now, there are two benefits of growing next to huge rocks is one, they are protected from strong sunlight. They basically get an indirect sunlight. Apart from that, again, when there is a heat wave, the rock tends to act like a shield and protecting the succulent from getting damaged by the heat wave. So guys, this is how succulents tend to grow in nature. Uh, they are all left alone. There is no one to cover them. There is no shade cloth. There is nothing that can protect them from the heat waves or any kind of a strong sunlight so this is how they tend to grow in their natural habitat by taking refuge in between the cavities of the rocks or by taking refuge under huge rocks so when I tend to advise people not to expose their succulents to strong direct afternoon sunlight, so people tell me why not because succulents grow in full direct sunlight out in the wild. Now remember guys, most of the succulents that you have at your place or you have purchased are not necessarily coming from wild, but they are coming from nurseries and farms. Most of the succulents have been propagated under controlled climate and controlled environment. Now like these, as you can see, these cultivars and hybrids of Aguaidus have never been out there in the wild. They were basically created or cultivated in nurseries and farms under very controlled temperature and environment. So once they have been cultivated, they are either directly sold to the sellers or they have been directly sold to you. So you can understand over here, these guys have never been there out in the wild. That is the reason why the cultivars and hybrids are slightly weaker compared to the natural succulents. So the second misconception is by adding fertilizers, you can obtain bright colors on succulents. Now, many people keep asking me, can we add fertilizers to get bright colors? Now, guys, this is not true because in order to obtain the colors, you need to stress the succulent. In other words, you basically starve the succulent by giving less water and more direct sunlight. So when the succulent is getting stressed, it will start getting color. Now, this is highly possible during their dormant period because we tend to water our succulents less and they are exposed to direct sunlight. Now, you know, we do not feed our dormant succulents. So this statement completely contradicts to adding fertilizers to get bright colors. Now, guys, imagine if you feed your succulent with fertilizers or nutrients, it's basically like you're feeding the succulent. So the succulent will start to revert back to green color because it will start feeding. Now, guys, here we are just talking about non dormant succulents because feeding a dormant succulent is out of question and we do not do that. So when you add fertilizers to succulents, definitely you will water the succulent. Now when you water and feed the succulent, it will no longer be stressed. 
which is very obvious because the succulent is going to be happy because you're watering and feeding the succulent. So adding fertilizers and getting color on the succulent are two opposite poles. So if you want to have bright, vibrant colors on your succulent, you'll have to do less watering and expose it to more sunlight. So guys, the third type of misconception is again related with fertilizers. A lot of people think that adding more fertilizers will make the succulent grow faster and bigger. But don't do it guys, in the urge of getting huge succulents, you might end up indirectly harming them. Too much of fertilizers will make them weak and there will be artificial growth. Excess nutrients or excess fertilizers in the soil will invite unwanted pest fungus mold. Now you can imagine your pot with a weak succulent and then there is pest issue. Now to fix the pest issue you will use chemicals and the succulent that is already weak will not be able to handle all this and will collapse in no time. So be careful what you wish for. Just leave them alone when they feel it's time to grow. Trust me, they will. All you need is patience. Now the fourth misconception is bigger pot means big succulent. Now you might think giving a succulent bigger pot will give it more space to grow and it will grow huge. This again is not true reason. While there is definitely enough space for the succulent to grow, but remember bigger pot means more soil. More soil means more time for the soil to dry, meaning soil will remain moist for a longer period of time, which definitely is not good for succulents as there is a high chance that the succulent will rot cause of excess moisture. And for that matter not all varieties of succulents grow huge some start forming clusters some send out pups so it's not necessary that all succulents will grow huge like how you imagine while some varieties will grow huge but not all varieties so guys for a medium sized succulent minimum depth should be around three to four inches and maximum you can go up to five to six inches nothing more than that another best way to check if the pot is of correct size what you can do is with the tip of your finger you can just measure it should be around one inch from the edge to the center of the succulent now this is a very good size for the succulent to grow and trust me the succulent will grow very healthy now remember guys try to make use of earthen pots like unglazed clay pots terracotta pots or concrete pots because this helps the soil to dry faster now this was my previous uh Hercules that I had potted and here I have another pop again I have given the same measurements you can see one inch from the pot now the fifth misconception is watering kills succulents now a lot of people think that watering will kill their succulents and they are always scared to water now guys watering is not the main reason or the sole reason behind your succulents dying because if that was the case then every time you watered your succulents it would have died so what's the main reason now the main reason behind it is the moisture pressure Present in your soil so basically the longer it takes for your soil to dry the higher the risk your succulent is at getting rotted I will soon make a video on how to get your soil dried faster so till then try to let your soil dry completely before watering them again there is no set time or there is no time frame for watering it all depends upon your climate your soil the material of the pot and the amount of sunlight your pot receives now the sixth misconception is related to general succulent care. A lot of people think that all succulents need the same care requirement. Now guys that's completely incorrect because on my left hand side I have my Havartia and on my right hand side I have my Echeveria. Havartias tend to enjoy indirect sunlight, they do not like direct sunlight whereas Echeverias tend to like full morning direct sunlight. Apart from this, the major difference is Havartias tend to like slightly more watering compared to Echeverias. Now there is a very important difference in both these varieties and that's the dormant period. Havartias tend to go dormant during the summer season and Echeverias tend to go dormant during the winter season. So guys, these were very few misconceptions related to succulents. Definitely there are more misconceptions as well. I will be researching and presenting them to you very soon. So guys, I hope that this video was helpful to you. If it was, please hit the like button. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to my channel. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep propagating.